this is Lady T, and you're listening to Tea Time Thursdays with me on PositivePower21.org. my chest and the tears from my eyes but nevertheless they said that they love me but want me to fall in your presence is where I would go you hit me all in all I love them and you tell me how hey not so ridiculous but what God did magnificent and sure to make you more Took my life and he gave a cure Let's go great and make it for Diamond time I got it for Winning souls what I'm aiming for That's what I want to be famous for I'm a survivor I'm a survivor You took away my scars My God it washed me I'm a survivor I'm a For what God did magnificent Press and sure to make you burn Took my life and I gave the car Let's go great and I make you burn Time and time I got it burn Winning souls when I'm aiming for That's what I want to be famous for Yeah Listening to Positive Power Twenty One dot org with Jerry Royce. And yes, hi everybody. This is Lady T, and you are listening to Tea Time Thursdays. And we are on Positive Power Twenty One dot org. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal guest tonight that does everything that I love and. Everything that he encompasses as a man is just amazing, and his trials and his tribulations have made him what he is today. I would like to introduce everybody to Hollywood style, Mr. Charles Clark, that's in the house. How are you tonight, Charles? 
Hello, hello. How you doing, Lady T? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. How are you? Bless and hallowed favor. God gets the glory. It's an honor to be on such a phenomenal and audible show. Well, you know, <laughs> you are phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. <laughs> From what I'm reading, so the thing, the thing that really gets me about you and that I really liked when I read is all I read was about you giving back, you putting your time back into the community, into the youth, into you know resurrecting what it is that has been lost. So we're going to take Charles on a little tea time journey. And um, he, I mean, I mean, if he had a resume, y'all, I don't think, I don't know, he's busy enough as he is, so I don't think you can hire him, but y'all can look from afar and just uh, marvel, okay? Because he is a motivational speaker, he is a per- radio personality, he's a youth leader, he has his own corporation, his own business. He's the founder of Take Over the World Peace Movement. That just says a lot within itself. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your organization, Charles? Uh, yeah. Uh, basically what it is is that um, based on my past, there were so many things that I did as far as destroying my own community, uh, being a puppet for the devil, and once God gave me a chance to revive and re-edit myself, um, I thought that it would be honorable to give back to the community by putting together uh, an organization and build upon uh, projects that can inspire people to uh, gain their full purpose and which God has intended for them to uh, have in this lifetime. So um, it speaks for itself. So the word takeover, it means to take over your life, take over your destiny, take over what God has already anointed and appointed you to be. Um, in this journey, uh, going to from here to the kingdom, and um, you know, previously uh, we were working on a project uh, called the Takeover Tour, uh, which we're still working on, and it, it's definitely coming out soon. And the tour basically consists of uh, the, the first ever tour to have inspirational speakers and missionaries of music to come together in unity. Being that uh, music is a big impact on people's lives, whether you're at mm-hmm. home, you're exercising. Uh, just have a bad day or get a day of Absolutely. <laughs> I feel yeah. you on that one. Because what music does for me is, you know, it calms. I know I'm a little, I'm a little, little but there's a beast inside of here. So sometimes when I'm all, you know, riled up and somebody's done did something, you know, I have to take my music and bring it down a couple levels. So I got to bump it and I got to feel the music. And, you know, on Positive Power 21, we have amazing artist, so, so talented. We just, you know, heard uh, Keisha Dream, and that was I Am a Survivor. So I interviewed her. She was absolutely just smashing. So, you know, I just wanted to do a shout-out to her and let her know that, you know, we're thinking about her. We're always, you know, keeping her in our thoughts and prayers, and we appreciate, you know, her letting us, you know, giving us her vibe and her music. Now, getting back to Charles here, you know, it's, your journey has been, let's say, a little bit, you know, uh, cumbersome, and it has been, you know, ups and downs, highs and lows. And what really touched me was that, you know, um, that you kind of lost your father at an early age. Tell us how that affected you at that point in time, and then what you think that how it how it evolved into who you are right now? Well, you know, uh, in the six years, going on seven years, that uh, I, of my memories of my father, uh, you know, he was a special forces of the military, a great man. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, he wasn't perfect. Uh, nobody's perfect, but uh, I do remember when him and my mother had planned uh, to get married, and apparently uh, in the plans of our situation from a fatal accident, uh, those wedding plans became funeral plans. Uh, it's still oh. much, uh, yeah, it's still much, it still hurts, but it, it don't Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Because well, you, you're you role models. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You, no, it, no it still hurts, and, and, and thank, you, thank you for your condolences. 
But, you know, I, I learned through a tribulation of that matter before I, I you know, got to my calling, um, during my transition from my teenage years to now. Um, it was his time. It was his time. And once we understand God's plan, uh, each of us have a number. We have a number, so it's important for us to carry out those purposes in which God has already given us. Um, you know, my mother did a great job. As, as a matter of fact, I want to say happy birthday to my mom, Charlotte Vivian Dennis. Today's her birthday. Uh, oh, happy birthday, Mom! That's what's up. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, this is yeah, yeah. So um, it's a blessed day. It's a blessed day. It and is, she brought it yeah, she brought a great man into this world that is you know giving back in so many different ways. Now, I mean, it's to me because I'm so into youth, and I also I well, I didn't lose my father, but I lost my mother at a young age. So. You being, thank you very much. I appreciate that. But you being a, a black male, which is hard enough in its own right in this day and age, but did you have people that could mentor you as you were growing up, or did you kind of waver a little bit and kind of drift off to the left? Like, did you have a lot of people around you? after you lost your father, to help you through that time? Well, you know, I, you know for me to say I didn't have nobody to help mentor me or, or give me good advice uh, as a father mm-hmm. child, that would be mm-hmm. a lie. I think the whole point was is that my emotions were so overdriven by losing such a great father. Um, yeah, raw. Wow. You're just raw. Yeah. 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 You know, being in sports, I was martial arts, football, baseball growing up, and you see everybody's uh, father hugging them and say, good job, son, and, and now you, you, you're looking like, where's my dad? You know your dad. Um, right, right. Yeah, and there's so something in a, in a mother that, a mother, I mean, maybe I know we, are, we have our roles, and I love that you were talking about purpose. I'm going to get back to that in just a second. But yeah. there's things that a woman cannot do that a man needs to do for another man to show him how to be a man. Because you have to see it, and you have to be able to connect with it to be able to live it, learn it, love it, and live it, and and, and play that out. So it, I know it had to be like a, a struggle. I, and I read that, you know, you had gangs in your area, and, you know, it was a trying time for you. So I know what it is to feel that loss and that and that void and and try, I'm trying I'm sorry I'm trying to fill that void and you know I can't say you know like you said nobody's perfect and you know it it just takes a lot to fill and that's such a big void you know what I'm saying that's like another part of you that you've lost and with society in this this day and age. I just feel like our black men are, have been, you know, got a target on them, and that um, they're really like kind of like ticking time bombs, ready to kind of blow because they don't have the direction or the outlet or somebody like you that has the tools to be able to assist them to get to the next level. Because you know, nobody likes to stay stuck and stagnant. You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. then that, yeah, you feel fine. You feel a certain type of way about that. You turn around five years later, and you're in the same place. So you know, nobody wants. And I know, you know, men are supposed to be the leader of the family and take care of the family and do all that. So I know that it had to be hard for you, and of course, your, you know, your mother. Happy birthday, mom. So, you know, t- t- tell me, how how did you make it through those times? Well, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a psychology major, and, and being with the gifts of God, me too. To the world. Uh, well, congrats, congrats. Dang. Um, we tend to realize that uh, at a young age, when your emotions are not developed or trained, uh, to, uh, to compensate certain things that come into your life, it causes a friction. So uh, me growing up, my emotions weren't so much of grieving. It was about finding that uh, person to fill that void. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I, felt in, I felt in the streets. You know, a lot of people uh, that's, um, that's in certain games uh, uh, or, you know, just with, uh, in the kind of street platform, when they see a young person that's vulnerable, 
and looking for that father figure and looking for that mentorship. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that they take advantage of that. Yeah. Because we're open. And, and, and I don't want to get, don't get me, don't get me going wrong now. I'm not saying that everybody does that, uh, but you have some people that, uh, that seeks that. And uh, I was a victim of that. But then again, I realized now I wasn't a victim. See, I had to go through what I went through in order for me to pursue my calling now. You can't get an anointed from Harvard or Yale. You had to get it from the kingdom. Um, so Amen. Amen. Once I realized, once I realized that God was only training me, preparing me, and making sacrifices to build me to go through this training session. So once I accept and flourish the capacity of my calling, then I can change those who cannot even imagine to take the first step into their purpose. Uh, a lot of young people that you talk to, especially when I was advocating in Baltimore, and just not in Baltimore, it's all over. The first thing they'll say, well, how do you understand? How do you know? And once you let them know that I've been in your shoes, they'll start to begin to increase to a mm-hmm. your knowledge. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't go to them and say, well, I learned about youth mentorship in, in college. I, I learned them in the class. They look, at you, look, look at you and laugh. You have to see. It's, 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 no, they want to know, how do you know my struggle? How do you know my pain? How do you know that I have to, and from a female perspective, I had to sell my body to feed my kids or take care of my family. As a male perspective, I had to you know, sell drugs because my mom's a diabetic and she had cancer she can't afford because of state policy. So, you know, then once you get into that fast and that fast life, um, it becomes more than just uh, a survival tactic. It becomes, uh, you know, hey, you know, I don't Because know. it's your reality. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's what yeah. you have to, yeah, you have to live that. Yeah. And you had to step up and take that place that that void was. And you had to exactly. become a man before maybe you were, I'm not saying you weren't ready, but, you know what I'm saying, kids need to be kids, and they don't need a lot of extra, you know, what the heavy world is bringing down on them. You know, so, yeah, yeah and, and, and it's like, you know, we are, we are, I think we are in a crisis right now. But everybody hold on, because believe me, he only gets better. So we are going to take a quick commercial break and listen to Al Kim a great artist with a phenomenal, phenomenal, he's a lyrical genius. And this is Here I Am. Lord, I just want to say thank you. For sending your son down to die for my sin. Even though I messed up, did I get it wrong? Love me unconditionally. Yeah. So here I am. All I have is you. A sinner saved by grace, but is that really true? Cause I still feel in love with what I used to do. And I don't feel the change, but my heart yearns for you. I don't feel complete, even when it's going right. When I'm missing you, Lord, please come into my life. Loving you the real test, not to love you to get blessed. And yes, I know that you the best. So here I am to worship, sacrifice my life so you can work it. How you see fit for your glory is worth it. Everything else can take a backseat. Running to your throne for your mercy like a track me. Why you have to ask me, I don't understand. Without you, Lord, how can I be a real man? I ain't gon' try. I give you all of me, Lord, and ride till I die. Put my here knees I to the am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say. To your last breath, Lord, was I really worth it? Cause apart from you, my life is all worthless. 
end up on it working Cause it's all in vain Without a real purpose I really need to change I don't know how It's amazing That you even called me Lord I'm in all See my struggle still haunt me Random women every night Just to feel wanted To feel like a man Cause my daddy didn't want me Had a past pain Addicted to Mary Jane Father on cocaine Money down the drain Baby mama drama Got me going insane I know I've been redeemed here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me, here I am to worship, here I To your father, that's my only option After you ripped the veil And gave me the gospel So I could see the truth So I could walk with you And that's the greatest thing That anyone can ever do You really saved my life When I was worse at it An addict on any level For pleasure, pain, and passion I could never grasp it Cause it's never lasting But Lord, you everlasting I burn my flesh to ashes So I could walk with you Your love is unconditional So even though I struggle with my past You still see me through Sometimes I get it wrong I fail plenty times But I get back up and I ride Your son lives and die For my eternal life So now I'm still tight God decides you give me life Now I'm saying I will fight All my pain hurt And my struggles in my my past life, Lord, you wipe away my tears every night. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together, lovely God, and all together, worthy God, and all together, wonderful, so wonderful. Hey everyone, don't forget about Tea Time Thursday with Jerry Boyce Live Worldwide on PositivePower21.org. I absolutely love that song. I'm sorry if you heard me in the background, Charles, bumping it, but you know what? That song right there was apropos for who... I feel like you are and how you've been giving back because he talked about his his childhood. He talked about his trials and tribulations, how he turned his life over to the Lord, how he gave back, and how his struggle was. I know that you went down a path that you probably, you know, are not too proud of, but we all have to go through things because it's called a test for a reason. And that's why you have a testament, because you have a voice that needs to be heard. And I feel like from what I've read that you have touched many lives. So I know that you um, turned your life over to the Lord. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and where you are at in that place in your life at that point in time? Well, you know, I always had uh, God in my life uh uh, in particular areas of my spirit, uh, even though it was a switch of warfare going on in my transition. If you look at my timeline, um, losing my father at the age of six, going through the process of challenging with those emotions from six to 13, from 13 mm-hmm. to 21, going 22, I was involved in a lot of things. I experienced and witnessed some of the most significant things to a person uh, beyond their imagination. Then from, from 21 going to 22 all the way to 29, I was incarcerated in prison, a federal penitentiary. Wow. Uh, so, so I've only been out five, five, a, little, a little over five and a half years. So compared to yeah. five, five and a half years. Uh, wow, see. how was that? Oh, that God. I mean, yeah. And, but yeah. you, I mean, you, you did a 360 up in there. And then yeah, you the had such stuff. a powerful, yeah, you had such a powerful presence that you affected a lot of the other gentlemen that were in there. 
and they also in turn turned their life around and turned it over and surrendered. So tell me what it is. What, okay, what it is that you get, what it is that you spit out because, you know, I've been there before and I'm not a man, but I know what that is to be in that situation. So I know that it was a struggle and you spent most of your upbringing in there. So there, you really didn't have much of a balance. You had one drastic thing happen, and then you had another drastic tragedy happen. So it's like, I mean, how did you pull that string? And then you gave it back out to other people that needed to hear it. It's like you sacrificed self so that you could give them the word. Well, you know, uh, a lot of people said that I would never make it past the age of 21 because of stuff that I was involved in, stuff that I was doing. So if you look at the bright side of things, how God orchestrates certain tribulations and triumphs, by me being incarcerated, uh, I passed the age of 21. So there was one. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, that's a blessing right there, right. Yeah, and, you know, when people talk about prison, you know, you see stuff on TV and you see movies and, and everything else, uh, it's pretty much like this. Um, be who you are, stand for what you mean, and mm-hmm. you, know, you got to mind your business. But, however, uh the thing about it is, is that everybody in there is doing time, uh, you know. So, you know, you call home and your wife or your girlfriend, um, and it was what they call Jody, or, or everybody that you grew up around or uh, even your family members or friends, et cetera, you know, start right. passing away. And you, you can do it by just like, wow, why now? Why? Because I'm incarcerated. I'm in this cage. Why all these things happen to me now? But then again, there's another side to it. When I was in prison, I never thought I would find my calling or discover what God had for me in this grid of a magnitude. Um, I know that uh, people start coming to me uh, as I was praying in my cell, and it's like, wow, it was very touching. You're talking about killers and people of all kinds of mm-hmm. platforms to, to my new platforms. Um, mm-hmm. So I just started speaking, started talking. I let God use me, and uh they said, I know, I started going to the, uh, the chapel um, on the prison yard, and they used to have sessions um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes Wednesdays, but mostly Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they asked me to speak. And uh, brothers used to come and need advice, and I just started speaking. And from, from that point on, uh, not only the inmates uh, was there attending uh, faithfully, but also I had COs that would come off their, uh, their shift uh, or during their breaks. And, and listen to me speak, and I was touching them. Uh, that the is amazing. Yeah. That is, I mean, yeah, because, you know, what you did was you crossed the line that, you know, okay, my both of my parents worked for the state, you know, as I grew up. And so my adopted mother actually, you know, she worked in the prison system. So I think she wanted to kind of shell shock me, <laughs> and she took me on a yeah. tour. So, you know, she was like, this is where I work, this is what I do. And, you know, my father also worked there. So it, there's a fine line there. And you crossed yeah. the line that a lot of people, you know, wouldn't even dare. They do it their time, but they want to do it safe. They want to do it to themselves. They don't, they don't want to be bothered. You don't bother me, I won't bother you. Don't touch my stuff, I won't touch your stuff. Don't say no, I won't be none. But you exactly. came all, you came all out the box. And you only not had the word that you were being a vessel for, but you talked to inmates, you you talked to CEOs, you talked to everybody. We're the inmate daddy, and you have affected them. And it's been in such a positive way that you ended up helping in the riots that just, came about in Baltimore, right, with the death yeah. of Freddie Gray? Yeah, that was, that, was, uh, that was something that I wasn't prepared for. It just happened in the instance. Um, I was actually mentoring uh, a couple of people uh, right when I seen them on, on, on the news. And um, uh, the way it, when it came about, God just spoke to me and said, you have to go there. You know, everybody always try to – be all in the TV, the news. I don't say everybody, but the majority of the, of, the, of the leaders that you have. You know it's everybody. You know everybody's and, busy. Everybody's well, in there. 
Well, tell us well, a little bit about it, because for well, some of us that well, didn't know about what happened to Freddie Gray, just give us a couple of details. Well, you know, for the, the first mistake is that Freddie Gray was already pre-judged. Uh, you know, he, uh, his record and the things he was involved in uh, was nowhere near like, like stuff I was involved in, but they already said that, you know, he brought it upon himself because he's already targeted as a young black male selling drugs. <laughs> couple of robbery charges and everything. So, um, and there's still uh, a lot of, uh, you know, talk about what has happened over with, with, with them. What we do know is that uh, the way that he was taken in by the law from, mm-hmm. you know, from his arrest to the back of that uh, police, uh, you know, truck uh, mm-hmm. was totally uncalled for and unjustified because if Fred was given a chance, just like I was given a chance, he could have been the next great leader or inspiring to not only the community of Baltimore but to the world. Um, absolutely, absolutely. It, it baffled me. It baffled me. And I was like, "Wow, look at this!" I mean, you know, if you look in the Bible, and I, I'm going to this to this to this part real for the Apostle Paul. I mean, Apostle Paul used to, uh, you know, kill people who who, who even say the name God or Jesus or anything to do with Christianity, and look how God used him. Uh, yeah. The most greatest part of the books in the Bible. So. Uh, when I when I saw this, um, I said to myself, and I spoke to God, and God said, "You was once on the battlefield as a warrior for the ungodly, for the for the enemy. Now become a warrior in the battlefield to bring peace and unity. To do your part, not for your glory, but for my glory, for the people that need to come into my kingdom that I've prepared." So I went out there, and I started. Um, when I first went out there, uh, it was it was you know as many things that I've been around, I've been involved in. I guess mm-hmm. I'm to the fact now I approach a uh, war zone on the peace side. Uh, my emotions was, was, oh, man, it was off the Richter scale. Uh, and I shed some tears. I, I was seeing people uh, crying because they were about their kids. People were sleeping in their cars because they couldn't get home. And little kids, it was, it, was just, it was devastating. And I began just praying with people, mentoring with them, uh, got together with, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Pastor Patrick Lewis, um, and, you know, his um, camp, and we started ministering and mentoring. You know, I met up with the mayor of Baltimore, uh, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie, and, uh, you know, just just doing what God uh, you know, wanted me to do. And, you know, when I see people come to me and say, you know what, uh, sir, uh, I, you know, I don't know too much about you, but one thing I do know, you touch me. You, mm-hmm. you get, uh, brought hope. And I said, well, you know, we're doing it together. I said, you inspire me because I came to you. I came to your city. Because there's no matter where you're from, if we're together as one, then we have to fight to get fight for each other. There's no right, and, and we're all in the same fight together, and it's all about the same thing. And, and it seems like, and it's, it's a shame this day and age that it's still about color. At the, it at the it end is. of the day, and I know I say that all the time, and people are going to get tired of me saying it, but I, that's one of my things that I say. At the end of the day, we still fighting over color. But you went down there as a peacemaker. You went down there as somebody that could level the field that people could relate to because you had walked in those shoes, because you had seen that side. And they automatically, like, it was in your aura. It was in your demeanor. And, you know, you went and you went into a war zone and you talked to gangs and you let them know what that what anything that they did was just going to infuriate and make it worse. So all you did was douse the fire, and you did it in a godly way. Well, you know, you know what, and I have to say this. Uh, you know, you know, I, I really can't take no credit, and I know a lot of people say, "No, why don't you take credit?" You know, it, it, it was a lot of people, uh, of most of uh, myself, who did their part. What I will say is this: is that. When I went into Baltimore, I didn't see color. I see the situation. Um, mm-hmm. And the situation is that uh, you had a lot of kids, young know, youth or whatever, that was burning in the city, that was, you know, uh, doing all types of just devastations. And we don't look at the fact is that this is their way of, of, of them being here because a lot of, I've seen a lot of kids that I've talked to say, I wrote to the Congress. Um, you know, go to my oh. schools, I, I whatever, and they, and they, and this, and this, and this is what the city tells them: we'll get back to you later. Thank you. We will reply back to you later. Secretary, we'll get back to you and your family later. 
Um, mm-hmm. Later is now. Later is now. So when right, you, right. This, 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 this is the end result. You you can't keep you can't keep um, uh, trying to put a fire out. You know when you're using gasoline instead of you know the, the, the tree of life, which is water. And um, boom, absolutely. Yeah. That I mean, so, right there. <laughs> that yeah, is and, those are some, that's powerful within itself. Of course, of course it is. I mean, let's let's look at this. I, uh, you know, and this this, this is reality. What what sickens me is that I understand about uh, the racism part because I, I advocate I have a thing called unity, unity beyond color, which is doing very well. Um, the thing about it is that we always say, oh, the, the white people, this and the, the KKK, and once uh, opposite race attack another, it becomes worldwide. So CNN is on ABC, NBC, CBS, everything. But when it's black on black. It gets no 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 airplay. It gets no light or whatever. So mm-hmm. my thing is, is that, and, and this is good for all African Americans. I mean, I'm African American and Native American. I love both of my cultures. But but at the end of the day, I'm a human being, and I look at everybody as my brothers and sisters in Christ. Absolutely. You cannot set up here and advocate and complain about KKKs and all this other stuff when your own people's killing each other. Let's look in Baltimore. Let's look in. I'm not in Baltimore. Chicago, uh, D.C. Uh, it's everywhere. It's even I Detroit. Know. Every, yeah, it's, yeah, it's bleeding everywhere. It's it's getting kind of like it's kind of contagious. That's why I feel like you know our our black men are about to snap. Just one more incident, you know, because everything that's been happening has been huge. They haven't been little minute things. It has been like you know our young black youth that don't have an outlet that don't have, you know, things to take up their time and to educate them and give them tools to, you know, uh, progress in life, to, to make that next step, to um, become someone like you to look up to. They fall upset and mad and angry, and, and it just, I think it kind of festers inside. And it just, you know, and if you don't have an outlet, and everybody's not going to be a basketball player. Everybody's not going to be a football player. That's not what life is about. Life is about what you talked about in the beginning, and that was purpose. So you can't wander around here and not find your purpose because you're wandering around aimlessly at the end of the day. You, 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 know, you know, I'm glad you said it because there was one um, kid that I talked to and um, it, it was it was very sad. But what he what he said was is that he said all I want to do is go, is go to the um, you know the, the inner city youth club in Boston and play basketball. He said I'm used to doing it every day to practice to be uh, an NBA mm-hmm. player. And, uh, and he said I can't even go down there because of this riot. And they don't realize that the backlash uh, of cutting mm-hmm. the, the chance of people's dreams. Because of this, it, it, it was bigger than just a city getting burned down. Let's just, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to get too into uh, the, uh, the politics, even though I've been with a lot of politicians. I will say this right here. You can rebuild a city. There's money to rebuild a city and fund anything, everything uh, that's been destroyed material-wise. But when a person loses their life, use their sense of dignity and their purpose, uh, if you don't stop it quickly, uh, well, when you lose your life, you're done anyway. But as far as the, the journey to that point, then there's a bigger issue. Uh, because mm-hmm. money, can, money can buy purpose. Spirituality Absolutely. is what gives Amen. purpose. And then you've got so many leaders right in the inner city is advocating for all over the world except for their own community. And I strongly, strongly say this to everybody, to the upcoming leaders, even leaders who've been in the game for a long time. You know, do not forget where you come from. Yes. Protest, advocate, but don't forget about where your city it is. I mean, is that don't wait until something happens and then when happens, right, the right, be proactive. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's, to, it's to proclaim what is needed substantially, so these things cannot happen. Do not wait until it happens and then you will be all the camera, all the news, and giving all this propaganda and this stuff going on about what should be, what what, what can be, and what the people need to do. The people look up to people like us, and I and I tell people all the time is that. You know, I can, I'm not going to say I can change the world. Uh, I can be part of that uh, magnitude. If I change one life or find a person who can do greater, then I'm content because leaders create leaders, not followers. If you create followers, then, therefore, you are limiting your, I'm limiting the, the, the purpose mm-hmm. of God has given us. It, it's about mm-hmm. us 
making sure that people can get to the level that we're on or even better. I tell anybody any day, I want you to be better than me. And they always say, well, how can I do that? Because I'm going to show you if you, if, if you allow me to and what God's given me to give, to, to give it to you. So we have to realize that it's not about self. It's about us. And um, I was. My it's kind of like reach one, teach one. That's you did more than reach one, teach one because you gave them the tools. See, that's what a lot of people are missing. You, you, you know, you have been proactive. People can talk all day, but you have to walk that talk. You can't just keep talking because then you will lose their interest because you're nothing. You are not doing what it is that you're talking about. You're standing behind, kind of like. A wolf just barking, but you're behind that fence, and you don't want to get dirty, but you want to talk all that stuff, and it's not in a positive way. And we're, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm gonna bring you back because we we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we're gonna hear Jesse Clark, just like we got Charles Clark here as a guest, and, <laughs> and he is, and he, is, and he, is, and he is, we are singing the song is My Resurrection. God help me and save me from my wicked ways. Give me one more chance, Lord, and let this be my holy resurrection. I have fallen so many times, Lord, that now it seems harder and harder to rise once again. I need your help. I need your strength, I need your support, I need your love. There was a time when my smile radiated like the morning sun, and words of hope and love were so eagerly sung. I remember there was a time I used to be able to run, perhaps not like the wind, but I still had use of these aching limbs. That was before I broke myself from within. Pain stings me now with each step, each step, as I leave yet another heavy footprint on the path of my own regrets. I was young, I was foolish, I was selfish, I was dumb, yet still you were there to help me in my absurdity and allow me to overcome. I realize now I am still that ignorant child, and I am so ashamed to be your son. So many hurdles that I laid before my own feet. I took for granted so much over the years and became a slave to my own demons and fears. Please tell me that my words do not fall upon deaf ears. I have asked before for your guidance and assistance, and though there were so many times you offered me a better way, another road to ease the weight of this aching load, I showed resistance. Perhaps I was too afraid of the dreaded act of change. It's all so strange to me now, as I recall all the pain from whence I came. Each breath now, as before, is a sacred gift, but now at times it burns my lungs. What have I done to myself? What have I become? Just an aging fool who was too ignorant and self-indulgent to follow the ways of your golden rules. Heal my heart, that at times screams and pounding agony within my chest. Repair its broken clasp. Let me will thy art and bleed sovereign blood, and let it pump hard like the murmur of my damaged mass. Free me at last from these shackles of sorrow that I have worn in silent shame for so long. Teach me, O oh Father, how to be strong, how to stop doing so much wrong, and sing thy song for all the heavens to hear rather than hide myself from me and slither in the demeaning shadows in the filthy company of deceit and lies. Hold me in your arms and keep me safe for another lonely night until I am there by your side in the healing home of your kingdom of light. Reshape me, mold me, make me whole, create me anew. Let me be what I was dreamt of in my conception as I was held in the eyes of my mother's view. Let me be a symbol of salvation and a reflection of you. So please, Lord, help me as these tears begin to fall once more. Show me my humble worth. Reanimate me in thy blessed holy image while I still have time upon this earth. And please, let me live again. Lord, 
God help me and save me from my wicked ways. Give me one more chance, Lord, and let this be my holy resurrection. Live Worldwide Podcast. Absolutely. And you're also listening to me, Lady T, on Tea Time Thursdays on Positive Power 21. And our guest tonight is, <laughs> y'all, if you're just tuning in, I suggest you, you know, archive it and come back and listen to the beginning because this is a phenomenal black brother, African-American man. But he doesn't, the thing is, is he does not, and he made it a point to say that, and I'll repeat it, he does not focus on color. He focuses on the issue at hand. And there is something about that that a man can take and own up to his past and own up to what he did and acknowledge it and and kind of wear it like a badge and live it and, and give that experience to other people. And if you just reach one, you change somebody's life. So everything that you encompass and that I've read, I think I just text Jerry. I said, he is the perfect guest, Jerry. He is awesome. With everything that you've been through, you've kept that strength within You know what I'm saying, Dick? Because, you know, the devil is dancing, and he's dancing all the time. And he wants to take back what it is you're spitting out and changing lives for. So at the end of the day, I'll say again, and it is almost the end of the day. You know, Mr. Clark is into the ministry. He is into speaking and connecting and all about unity. It's about unity coming together as one, and it's about real justice, real justice for a real crime and not something that, you know, we have a lot of our men that are in prison for petty crimes and just locking them up and shackling them like we're back there in, you know, the days of slavery. I'm trying to figure out what it is in this world that everybody is so threatened about because you guys are the ones that are always looking over your shoulders. You guys are the ones that are driving while black and getting pulled over just because of your color. So what is it that you want to leave people with and let them know that a change is about to come if you were the one that was in charge of it, which you are in charge of it because you are that vessel. But what is it you would like to see for our future generation, our future men? Because the women, you know, we, we're dealing with ourselves. We're trying to deal with it. But men's issues, it's a whole different thing. So what is it you would like to see for the future for our young black youth? Well, I want them to learn about, uh, leadership advocating in a positive way. Uh, we mm-hmm. have options and, and opportunities to uh, relate to issues that come about, the past issues and the issues to now. But the, big, the, mm-hmm. most, the most important thing is that we, uh, as the older generation uh, who lead by example, uh, we have to make sure that when we plant uh, those seeds and, and nourish it, especially me having a five-year-old daughter to my beloved, by everything, uh, oh. yeah, she, she, that's, my, that's my that's my that's my life right there. She just she is five. Me speaks word to me when I look at her. The things she be saying to me, I'm like, wow, this is what is needed um, in the generation. Uh, that's beautiful. The, the main the main focus is, and I, I want to say this real quick. Um, you have to go on to real quick. Let them hear you because they need to hear you. They need to feel you the way I'm feeling you because you are a humanitarian. You are one to give back. Like you wake up and 
live, breathe, and all of this encompasses you. So you are all about trying to change a nation, and you are that vessel. So, yeah, we're, we're listening. Please, everybody open your ears because he is spitting, and he is spitting hard. So get ready. Thank you. Well, I, I did a lot of uh, advocation and speaking engagements. One of the ones that really touched me at uh, home uh, previously, not too long ago, I went to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, thanks to my one of my colleagues, and sister in Christ, Donna Rents of Sisters and Motions, Inc., uh, a very, very uh, phenomenal uh, company. Uh, shout out to Donna. Uh, I did a, uh, a fundraiser speaking uh, event gala at Fresh Start for Men Incorporated, uh, which is located in Charlotte. And to see the support, how the families and people from the community come came into the to the fundraiser to help empower and, and mm-hmm. sow a seed and to uh, give the opportunity so these guys who've been incarcerated can, can have a chance to redeem themselves. And, and, and it's not so much of going to the world, but right. on to God because God uh, is the reason why they have came back to the community to be productive and, and instill what is needed. But the, And the main thing is this right here. You know, one of the things about is being a leadership, being the public eye, people fear about what people will say about them or come at them. Listen, when people <laughs> hate on you, when people say the things they're saying, that means that you're moving in the right direction. Listen, when I first got into this, I went against a lot of people. Uh, and when I say against, not in hate, what I mean is that uh, trying to figure out why is they coming to me, why is they, you know, uh, targeting me. But then I realized mm-hmm. a person would not, put no time into something that's not affecting them or something that's touching them, whether they're able to admit to it or not. If you're going to be a leader, you have to expect, you know, even to give your life, even to give your life. You have to expect people to try to uh, commit you and sabotage you, and, and you know, because they don't have the willpower or, or they have a misunderstanding of, of what you're doing or not trying to understand. That's part of the program. But if you stay consistent with what God wants you to do, those same people who come at you is going to join you, and that's the beauty of when God says loving the enemy. Um, I go through it all the time. Uh, you know, for the most part, I have a very great support, uh, you know, uh, you know, all the way around. I have a lot of people who, you know, show a lot of love. But you have a few people that out there that still just don't get it, and all they can do is pray for them. But I'm here to tell you, do not fear what man can do but fear what God can do. But see, God okay. Know. Did everybody hear that? Say that again. Please God say that again. Do not fear what man can do. Fear what God can do. Never put your faith into the creation. Put it into the creator. That's who you put your faith and stuff in. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure people are talking about me right now, whether it's good or bad. It's the same with Lady T, uh, uh, everybody who's uh, doing something that God has appointed and know them to do. You know what? Let them talk. They talk about Jesus. He's the most perfect. Let them talk. Do not let them take control of the will or the drive to the navigation of which you're going to. You're going to the, to the finish line. You're going to victory. Stay put. Stay firm. Move when God tells you to. You know, it, it's a time for everything. But push, push to all the youth out there. Listen, I know that you're already talking, whether you you know, you, you know, as a white person, as a black person, as a Hispanic, all races are targeted. That's 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 not even a discussion. The thing is, is that how can we take that target and change it on something that can be productive? How can it make to to where it can be? We have to worry about looking at the news and seeing our young kids, black kids, Hispanic kids, white kids, even the green kids, mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely, their, their life been taken away because a person has a beast over something that's not worthwhile. You know, you have so many people, uh, especially on social media, that this, this is the biggest thing. People on social media always want to give their opinions and this and that and the other, really don't care about, you know, uh, a lot of things going on until it hits their house, you know. Uh, right. When it hits too close to home, home, it's too safe. You go. Yeah, you yeah. Full that's full when they want to get involved, right. Exactly, exactly. That's my next point. You know, you take a, 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 a typical person who really haven't really been through a, a, a tragic situation, and you come to them, hey, look, hey, we have to share this on social media. I uh, like to spread the word. This person has lost their child. They got shot. 
and killed and slain at the age of six or seven. And it's all, you know, whatever, what, but as soon as, God forbid, something happens to their kid or their brother or their whatever, mm-hmm. they can't advocate for them. People, this is ignorance. We can't break all of that tradition the world wants um, to, to see. See the way God has already written in the Bible. See that it was already been proclaimed. You cannot expect results when you are not resulting to the expectations that God has already given. It's not going to happen. Okay, it's not going to happen. I'm tired of seeing my brothers and sisters in Christ crying at funerals or crying because they're going to commit suicide or crying because their faith is completely depleted. Listen, the depleted. The the least of the the spiritual propaganda in which the devil is trying to put into your life, you're going to make it. All you have to do is just face the challenges, face the facts. You know, I was talking to one of my good brothers tonight, um, very good brother of mine. Um, he also does uh, my security for a lot of my um, projects and events. Uh, Mark Williams, uh, he, he's just a, a phenomenal, phenomenal guy. He read uh, uh, one of his publishers that he uh, that was publishing the book, um, and it was just so it was so deep. And what I got from that, which I want to mention, is, is about that when a challenge comes into your life, God has already given you the tools to take that challenge to the level to where. It's going to magnify the way it's going to change people's lives. Do not run from a situation. If you are known and appointed, you run to it. And I look for problems. I look for Amen. Problems. This is my calling. I, I don't fear nothing. You can say anything about Charles Clark. But one thing I would tell you this right is this right here. This is still, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for everybody out there who really doesn't have the voice to speak just yet. Let me speak for you. And I want you to take this to heart. Right now, you know that God has called you to do something very, very huge. You know that God has reported you and spared your life in situations you knew that the devil was about to bring you into his home and keep you there for captivity and slave forever. But I'm here to tell you, oh. break those chains right now. I want you to realize that you are that one. You are the person that can change that platform. You can change the world. Do not let anybody tell you what you can't do, what God has already said that it's done. God has the last word. He's the alpha, he's the omega. It's plain and simple. Get out there, advocate, take notes, learn, just pray, go to God. And, 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 and when people come into your life and they, 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 they do you wrong, forgive them. Sometimes a person has to do you wrong so you Ooh. can what right is. You can't I mean, I feel, I feel you. I, and I'm one of those people. That, yeah, I'm one of those people that it's hard for me, like, especially if I've been kind of cut to the – to the meat, you know, to the, the white meat, it's hard for me to just forgive and forget. Like, you know, but, you know, that's, that's my upbringing. And that's, you know, I know I'm a work in progress all day, every day. So, yeah, you know. That's, that's, that's the reality of it. You say the right mm-hmm. work in progress. Not everybody's going to get it. Look, I, I, I will tell you this right here, honestly. And, and, and that's, that's, let's use a uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, perspective or, or, or facts. Um, you know, when you cut yourself, or when you break a bone in your body, the body that is designed uh, the way God has created to, to heal and become ten times tougher in that area. If you burn your skin and pick your skin, when, it becomes, when the scab's up and that scab is being removed, that skin, that area, that skin is ten times stronger than the initial skin that you was born with. When you break your bone, the bone becomes ten times stronger than the bone that you was born with and this before, before that, that incident. So imagine when you go through a situation where something in your life gets broken, your spiritual bones, your spiritual, your spiritual skin is getting torn. If you, if you let the scab, um, uh, the spiritual scab take place, and once it's removed, you become ten times tougher. So it, it goes back to uh, uh, looking at the flesh and the spiritual side of things. You know, we, we were born in sin, we're going to die in sin. You know, everybody has mm-hmm. you know, their, their theologies, uh, you know, about how the Bible should be. Or, or how you're supposed to live the Bible. That's why the church is corrupt. If you look in the, if you look in the Bible, if you look in the Bible right now, uh, you never see uh, demons and witches and crafts and whatever going against each other. It's always the church. It's always the Christian folks, the communities. I'm here to tell you this right here. You can find God anywhere. You can be blessed with your purpose anywhere, whether you're homeless, whether you're struggling out on crack. Listen, you can make it. Never. Somehow people always say, oh, when you... Uh, smoke crack, you're always a crackhead. That's a lie. When you're full, you're always a crackhead. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're always a alcoholic, you're always a alcoholic. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because if you're saying that you're saying that God's word cannot change the most devastating people in this life, 
and God never, God would never give his only begotten son if he did not have a plan to where we have salvation. So nah, anybody, amen. Anybody, anybody that's out there saying that, stop it. I'm being straight up stop it because it's not right. You need to pull your brothers to the Christ in there. I don't care if they stay in a one-bedroom and you stay in a mansion. Offer them, a, offer them um, some breakfast. Offer them um, some dinner. Offer them um, the word. Pray for them. Never let nobody feel like they're beneath you because we are all beneath only one person, and that's God, and that's true. And, and boom, everybody, did you hear that? Because ain't nobody better than anybody else. You know, we all put our pants on the same way. So no one stands above anybody in this world except for him. And, you know, he is what we are learning. He, every day, if you learn something every day, and if you listen to Mr. Clark here, because he is really spitting, I'm not saying gay, but he is spitting what it is that needs to be heard. And I think that we are lacking like 10,000 of him. Like, we need, like, 10,000 more of him and just spread him around because he is not just, it's not, he, it, if you really listen, it's not about him. He's taken himself out of him, and he has made himself the vessel. He is very selfless. He is very about unity. He's about pure, unconditional love, and I think that's what we have missed. That's what we have not been able to fall back on is pure, unconditional love because we always think people have a hidden agenda or people want something from you. And I'm guilty of that too. I'm definitely guilty of that too because I've been put in places where I have not wanted to be. But I've also trusted in the Lord and prayed on it. And I have to sit on things for a minute and get some clarity and not be a hothead. Because, you know, hot, you know, hot head makes for, you know, soft behind. Trust and I'm I, I, <laughs> and, and, and look, let me say something. I want, everybody, I, want everybody, I want everybody to understand. I still sometimes have my moments, and I say, God, forgive me. And, and you know, tr- I mean, you know, when you are in the public eye and, and, when, you, and when you become on yeah. a number level with God put you on to, people don't understand the challenge and how hard the devil works. You know, of uh, 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 Maybe uh, dancing. Man. Yeah, oh, Maya, Maya Angelou said one thing she, that, I, that I never forget. She said that love costs you nothing. Hate will cost you everything. Okay? Nothing. And, 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 that's, and that's something that, that, that stood by me. And, and you know, uh, I have to say this. I have to say this. Um, you know, I recently I just uh, uh, came about one of the most phenomenal companies, families, organizations, movements, uh, in my journey, Sector 7, uh, Inc., and, uh, you know, not just as a talent, but also as an acting division manager and also now uh, over the uh, speaking um, currently, uh, Mr. William um, Biston, uh, who is the CEO of Federal Sector 7, uh, this brother is, is just an anointed and appointed leader of God, and to all my Sector 7 family, you know who you are. I love you all so much. It's great things they're making. And the reason why I want to bring them up, not just because uh, to promote, it's, it's not about, it's like, like one thing we, we learn in Sector 7 and, and, and we have a free, it's not about us, it's about what God wants us to do. You know, we have to come together and give opportunities and options to people out there who have gifts. If a person does not have anything to choose from, they would develop their own choices. And those choices not... I'm influenced by what God wants. Those choices will create, create more havoc and more work in which we are trying to reduce as far as the enemy recruiting people to destroy God's plan. But I'm here to right now, we would not allow that to happen. We would not allow that to happen, and I'm going to fight even if it costs me my life. I'm going to fight, and I'm going to fight to the end until God has used me and I'm going to empower people and talk to people. And it's not about you being articulate. It's not about you going to college and, 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 and all the other stuff. Although, don't get me wrong, get your education. Get your education. Please, let, please get the education. Get yeah. Your education. Get, it, get, it, get it. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. But on another note, do not compensate or compromise the purpose that God has given you that you're not going to find in education um, here in this world. There are some things that you're not going to get until you've been through a storm. People have to realize another thing real quick, climate here on earth. 
people don't realize if we didn't have storms, the trees would not be standing right there. We didn't have storms. The climate control of this earth would kill and, and just eradicate a, a death, complete death on this earth. By having storms, things reproduce, things extend. So right now I want you to realize the storm that you're going through, let it extend your life. Let it reproduce your life. Stay in the storm. The sunny day is coming. It's, I'm telling you, it's coming. Right, as a matter of fact, it's, it's happening right now. You're going to move into an horizon. You're going to move into a zone that no one is not going to be able to touch you unless they want that purpose of that driven of, of life um, expectation that God has already put in them, them into you to not so much follow you but to join you in the fight to destroy the devil. And we will destroy it. God already said we, will, we have won. We have to just, just proclaim it. So um, my movement, Sea Clock Inspired, uh, hey, we, 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 we doing it. We doing it. And especially with Second Seven, again, uh, go to www.secondseven.com. It's all there. There's a movie um, that's, that's about to that's change the world. It has begun the awakening. It, it, look, this is some serious stuff. The spiritual warfare is deep. And if you need to know your spirituality, then guess what? You're going to be lost. But I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to tell you I want you to join me. When I say me, I mean all of us who's fighting a good fight. And I'm here to tell you that you're going to make it, and we're going to overcome everything. We're going to save this generation, and we're going to set a new standard, God's standard, and we're going to break every chain that the devil has enslaved our people. When I say our people, I don't mean just black. I don't mean just Absolutely. Black. I don't Absolutely. Mean just black. I say our people, I mean us as both and sisters in Christ. That's right. humanity, you know, because we got to, we have to pull together. It can't be, you know, you can do everything that you can do, but if people don't have that within them, that fire in their belly, and they want change, and they want to see a change, and they don't want to be stuck and stagnated, then they're just going to sit there. But I think that there is a time for a change. I think this is the time for a change. And we are all going through the same struggle, but in different paths, in different ways. I'm going to, we're going to kind of tie it up, yeah, a little bit with um, another, Kimberly with Kimberly. And it is, I am praying for you, and we're going to come back and get Mr. Clark's final words, because I know he's got some. And we are going to, yeah, we are going to say, Hello and goodbye, and we definitely, definitely are waiting to hear Miss Kimberly Campbell. Come on with it. <laughs> <laughs>
wasn't the same Got a billion people reaching for fame And I out of order world overrating the game I'm just trying to tell the truth But they blind to the proof And a lot of crazy things That's destroying the youth believe In the power that you have inside You can break my things But you can't break my pride I'd rather find the light Than sit and die inside I'd rather fight the war I never run and hide Used to think that life ain't have a lesson Sitting alone, I never thought they kept my blessings Stressing, now I hold the word in my possession Just another way for me to deal with my depression See people get caught up in the world of pain All they do is lose none of the things to gain No regrets for the life that's living in shame Gotta change yourself before you put in the sight of his aim Hey everyone, don't forget about Tea Time Thursday with Jerry Boyce Live Worldwide on PodsWithPower21.org. That was absolute, that was the perfect song. And I'm sorry, it's Kimberly, Kimberly. My bad, Kimberly, Kimberly. But, you know, I, I get excited about you when you sing because I want her vocals just can put chills up and down your spine. And her words, you can feel them as she's singing and her riffs, and she, you can just ride it out. So, everybody, I don't know if you've been here, but if you haven't, you done missed out. But, you know, we got Cherry boy, yeah, really bad. So we can archive it, and you can come back and listen to Mr. Clark. And it's, this was not about a testimonial here. What he did is he came here and he let us know that there needs to be a change, and that he is just one of the many vessels that are out there that are here on this earth to make a change. And we all do know it. But, you know, people are sitting back. What are we waiting on? What are we waiting on? Because, you know, the devil is dancing, and he's dancing hard. And I know I talked to one of my friends, you know, Shirley Ann, and I let her know that I can feel it. Because this is a new, this is, kind of, this is new for me, uh, being on the radio and being in, in this facet. And I love it. I love listening to you. I love hearing what you're doing. I love knowing that, you know, especially I'm over here in Hollywood. So, you know, everything is a little bit glamorized. So sometimes people lose sight of what the bigger picture is. And the bigger picture for me is walking down the street and seeing people that are homeless and don't have any food. And, that, you know, I am one of those, I, I don't like to see that. I don't want to see pain because he gave up his son so we would not have to go through all that. And all we're doing is we're just festering it and festering it and festering it. So, Mr. Clark, I was, I was already going to ask you if you wanted to give some shout-outs and tell, you know, about the people that have helped you along the way. But, you know, you did that. You told and you let us know that, you know, you have, there is a catalyst for your vision. And they are helping you and bless you. And we definitely, definitely appreciate your time, your efforts, the journey that you had to go through. Because it was a hard one, and I felt it. And even though, you know, the bio wasn't extensive, it said a lot. And losing your father says volumes, because then it's kind of like you're lost, and you have to find your own way now. And you have found your own way, and we appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story with us. I'm blessed that I was able to interview you and get this, you know, because somebody canceled, and then boom, the man, badass, Mr. Charles Clark. So give us some, give us some party words. Give us some party words. Well, in conclusion, uh, mm-hmm. I want to say that 
I just want to say that um, God gets the glory. It's an honor to always be uh, on any kind of platform to where we can share the word and inspire uh, everybody across the world. Um, we just have to stick together in unity. Um, mm-hmm. And if you want to know more about what I'm doing in depth, uh, beyond what it was spoken about on this wonderful, phenomenal show, Lydia and Jerry, of course, live worldwide. Worldwide, worldwide. Right. 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 Um, <laughs> uh, go on Facebook, just put in Sea Clock Inspire. My name Charles Clark, Sea Clock Inspire. And um, we can. Say that one more time because the phone kind of went out. And I, I'm trying to write it down fast myself. So <laughs> say it one more time. Say it one more time. Uh, you can put in Sea Clock Inspire. So C. Oh. C L A R K Inspire I N S P I R E. Uh, oh, or you can put in, Or you can put in Charles Clark, C Clark Inspire, with whatever one is you know is is. is you gonna pop up. It don't matter what yeah. they put in. You know yeah, you are yeah. you are there. You gonna up. pop up. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna pop. It's definitely gonna pop up. And um, just just, just shoot, shoot me some. Let's let's talk. I mean, anybody out there who needs some advice, they need a prayer, word of encouragement. Uh, I'm always busy, but I always find time because uh, God will always lead me to the people that, that need need that next level of greatness uh, to be inspired. So I'm here. And uh, I also want to give a shout-out to uh, a very close friend of mine, also like my brother, Manuel Bowser. Uh, his wife is my, like my sister, uh, Alana mm-hmm. Bowser, to all my, you know, to my entire family, even my enemies. I, I, you know, I love you too. Thank you. Thank you because you confirmed <laughs> that I'm doing the right direction, so I love you. Absolutely. Uh, That's a, let's do a shout out to Mama again. Happy birthday, Mama. Happy birthday, Mama. Oh, I love you. Happy birthday. <laughs> I said to my dad, I know you're down. I'm a little proud of your son. Um, thank you for the very spirit. Um, to my daughter, once again, to Nate Clark, you're my whole thing. Thank you for coming to my life. Oh. So, I, got, I, got so, I, I got so many. Taiwan, who, who's uh uh, R and B singer, a talented writer, producer. I mean everything. Taiwan is. I mean, look, just go on Facebook and, and just type in Taiwan. You will see the brother. You will know who he is. He's doing some great huh? things. Uh, so it just, it just so many people. Oh, George White. I have to say George White because George White gave my first break in the radio on our uh, on our show, Faith Walk with George White on the SRN Network in my radio show segment that I co-host is Real Talk Thirty. Um, okay. Okay. Gareth, also, the Clark Garrison, who's the CEO and president, family, everything of SRN Network, he's doing some great things, you know, to the community. There's so many people. So to everybody who know who I am and I've talked to, I want to say thank you and I love you. And, and I always leave uh, one of my metaphoric uh, spiritual words. Um, and this is one that I did this fresh, okay? So, Lady T, this is for you, and uh, I look forward to that with you as well. Um, thank you. You. You cannot give beef to a vegetarian and expect them to get full. Did y'all hear that? You, because that was, that was really, really powerful. Did y'all hear that? Say it again. Say it again. You cannot give beef to a vegetarian and expect them to get full. So in other words, what I'm saying to you is that you can you, – everybody have a different way of receiving the word and mm-hmm. in response to their purpose. When once you understand and deliver the proper spiritual food in order to get them to eat, then you have changed and saved the soul. So know your product. I say product because we're all products, but know your product, know your platform, know your environment. In, in other words, know your lane, know your purpose. Mm-hmm. And God, know your purpose. Don't try to get somebody else's lane and, 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 and try to take over because you'll get ran over. It, it, it's, a, it's a truth. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Um, just be true to, to the calling, and all make mistakes. Don't beat yourself down. Pray, repent, forgive. If people don't like it, oh, oh well, still love them. Let's move forward. Right okay. here. Okay. Throw us live worldwide from okay. all over. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sea clock is fire. Set to seven. Hey, 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 we doing it. We doing it. Let's go. Let's go. I'm hyped. I'm spiritual. Wait, I'm well. I'm <laughs> And, I, and you know what? You are doing, you are, and you are OD and me, and I love it. Like, I love the energy that you have. And we, are, we, were, we were definitely graced with your presence tonight. So, you know, I know I was feeling a little down today, and I've been going through my own trials and tribulations, but, you know, 
listening to you and listening to what it is that your vision is, I got you. And I you know, I'm 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 ready. I'm ready and, and I'm willing and I'm able. And if people keep that mindset and they keep their minds open and stop being so closed and scared, then we can make this happen. We can make this work. Especially with somebody like Charles leading the way. You know, because he is there and he's in the moment and we should be listening with our ears wide open. Thank you very much for coming on the show, PondaFire21.org. Amen. Amen. It won't be like Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to my guests and my artists on Tea Time Thursdays on PositivePower21.org. You've been listening to Tea Time on PositivePower21.org with Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. Share this file and tell a friend. And don't forget, we're on demand on PositivePower21.org and Speaker Radio forward slash PositivePower21.